everyone. So welcome back to another episode of Hello Spring. I am your host, Steven, or you may know me as Spring Sims, aka the yellow of this kid of the internet on YouTube and Twitch. But in today's episode, I'll be interviewing my good friend, Paul Pancake, who is a German content creator on YouTube and Twitch, who creates content based around the Sims franchise, but is also a university student. So he's doing all his studies all at the same time, which is wicked cool. But I do have to say that his builds are out of this world and very unique, and I highly recommend you all go check him out. All his links will be in the show notes below, but either way, let's go ahead and hop into the episode. Well, I just wanted to say, Paul, thank you so much for being on my podcast today. I'm so excited to finally like, chat with you about all these different things about like YouTube, Twitch, you know, how you're doing in 2021, you know, the Harry Potter save file that you did with Sim Proof. Like, I have so Ooh. many like ideas and like questions. I just want to pick your brain, you know? But um, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Also, <laughs> I see you did your research. <laughs> uh, uh, oh my God, I'm super excited uh, to talk with you today and um, to be here, of course. Yeah, I definitely did my research because, you know, I didn't want to come in here, episode five, looking all like crazy and like not know what I'm doing. So, of course, of course. <laughs> But how is your 2021 20, going so far? Like anything changed? Is it better than 2021 or 20 better than 2020? Like, well, um, first of all, um, yeah, when, when I went into 2021, I spent New Year's Eve with my family because, um, obviously, um, there's no partying, uh, this time and there was no partying. And, um, uh, so I spent it with my family and had a super calm New Year's Eve. It was amazing. And uh, it totally, I don't know, it, it was so much fun. And I woke up in 2021 and it, it felt good. Like it felt so much better than 2020. And it felt so peaceful. And um, I don't know, everything was great. And I also like, because I wasn't able to do as much stuff with my friends and um, I spent a lot of time with my family instead. And yeah, all of that. I don't know. I feel like I experienced like a totally different style of holidays this time and that made these first days of 2021 where I could just basically chill at home at my parents place like just sort of cool like um I really enjoyed it and I was sad when I had to go back to my uh, apartment in Berlin and kind of <laughs> be back at uni stuff so yeah so I do have some exams and stuff coming up so that is a little stressful so I can say that <laughs> uh. I'm in a super great place right now but um yeah, I do have some YouTube stuff planned and um, yeah, I just have to stick to my schedule because otherwise I know that I'm <laughs> going to fail YouTube and my uni classes. Yeah, other than that, I'm super excited for what's to come in 2021 and um, yeah, uh, pretty sure it can only be better from now. <laughs> yeah, I hope so because things have changed for the good and also for the worse, depending on where you live in the world, of course. But uh Honestly, like 2021 has been, it's only been like a couple of days by the time we're recording this yeah. podcast, it's been a couple of days, but, um, but the people that are listening, it, we're like months, like you'll be listening like months before. So like we're in like March when this episode airs. Oh, and yeah. so it's like 2021 has been interesting, but I honestly always do like new, Z, new year resolutions or like goals I want to set for myself Ooh. to achieve. And so like, what are some of like your resolutions or goals that you want to achieve in this new year? Um, so in this new year, so first of all, I want to keep my, um, at least my one video <laughs> upload a week streak. I know it sounds a little like a small thing, but uh, that was something I did in 2020. And uh, I was super happy with that. And um, I don't know, I made my, or like created that system of um, uploading, editing, uploading, editing, and it was so much fun scheduling it like that and uh, I really want to be able to to do that this year too um so that is one of the I don't know like one of the sims one of the uh, YouTube things I want to achieve and um honestly <laughs> I I want to go on vacation <laughs> me too uh, like a nice summer vacation but I guess that's not really like a resolution that's more of like a wish but uh, yeah maybe maybe get get a little fitter do some more sports um because I due to corona I did like I really I did a lot of more desk sitting and stuff and I feel like that wasn't that healthy for me so I should probably dive more dive into sports some more 
Um, and yeah, I kind of want to upload on YouTube more regularly, but, uh, that's, oh, I also love, I also uh, like experience streaming for the first time in 2020 and that was awesome. So yeah, I also want to do more Twitch streams. Maybe even like when I hit like a thousand Twitch followers, I, I'm thinking about making like a, like a super long streams, like some people do like a 12 hour stream, who knows, or like something for charity, which would also be awesome, which I know you're like basically the king of doing that because um, <laughs> the stuff you do on Twitch and the money you raise there is just amazing and i'm i don't know how you do it but it's like ugh, congrats on achieving these things and yeah that's that's about it it's honestly like doing all of the charity fundraisers and twitch like i applaud you like i was so excited the time that you were like i want to start streaming like oh yes do it do it do it and so you started doing it and i was like i was so excited and so happy for you that you um, just you know just like did it um but like thank you like, I just checked, you're getting very close. You're like, you know, on, under 400 away from 1,000. So you never know what could happen in a few months from now. You could get a 1,000, 12-hour yeah. stream. It's all, about, it's all about planning the, these things out, to be honest, because it's not easy doing a 12-hour stream, I realize. I've done quite a few, but they're definitely something that i uh, got to space out, you know. Exactly. Like, but... I don't know. I feel like it would be fun. And also, oh my God, I think you were one of the first, like, I think you were in my first Twitch stream ever, at least, or maybe in one of my first Twitch streams. I absolutely, I, I do remember that, that um, you were like um, putting like some messages in the chat and being nice and just, you know, keeping the conversation uh, going. And uh, I, I don't know, to this day, I love you so much for that, because that <laughs> helped me so much with my confidence. I, like I said, I don't know if it was in my first ever stream or if it was one of my first streams, but that really helped me like you and so many other people who came to my first stream It really made it easier for me. Um, so yeah, I just remembered that. Thank you so much. That's what I'm here for, to make it easier, you know, interact with you. Because Twitch can be very intimidating sometimes. So I wanted to make sure that you had, like, your like your first experience. I think I was there for your first stream, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm, yeah. I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, a smooth, easy thing, you know, interacting with you, making sure that you had things going, going for you. So, But you did a really good, like, first stream. I, however, my <laughs> first stream was very interesting. I was sick during my first stream. So, oh, no. Um, <laughs> that was a fun time. But that was, like, oh, like, four years ago. So I've evolved since then. Four years ago. Oh, my God. That's that's crazy. Like, I know. congrats on that streak. <laughs> Thank you. It's It's a lot of work. I had to manage a lot of stuff, but... You know, school, working, other things, life on top of that was, it was difficult, but I've managed to get through it all as uh, time went on. But we're kind of like, you know, getting better as as we go on. But I did want to ask you, though, I should have said this at the beginning of the podcast, but I wanted to ask you, can you tell the, the listeners a little bit about yourself? Because they might not know who Paul Pancake is. Oh, sure. Uh, I can do that. Uh, uh, hi, uh, my name is Paul Pancake and I am a YouTuber slash streamer and I mostly play The Sims just because, like The Sims 4 because I love that game. I have been playing The Sims um, for as long as I was able to use like a computer and um, I don't know, I love sharing stuff with you guys online and yeah, I... I got to know a lot of amazing people in the community last year, like in 2020, because that's when I really started interacting with the community. I've been doing like YouTube sim stuff before, but I wasn't really in the in the community. But um, yeah, I met amazing people last year, like, for example, Spring here or um, yeah, other great creators. And for that, I'm so thankful because that, for example, enabled me to be a guest on this podcast. And that's yeah, about it. <laughs> well, that's cool. I I love that because I, I when I first discovered you, I was like, "Ooh, this this person is gonna be a great friend or someone that I can just you know interact with whenever in like in the comment section on YouTube or just you know just follow their content because I I, I just I go through like phases or not phases I go through like the scrolls with YouTube looking for like. Um, videos to watch and I come across like someone like very genuine, kind and sweet and, Aww. you know, just has like really good energy to them. And so like you have Thank very you. good energy. 
I really love that. Thank you so so much. That's that's crazy. And like I said, I've been looking up for you, uh, up up to you for so long, and to also like other creators. And yeah, I don't know, like being appreciated like that is just um, it's a it's a dream come true. Thank you. You're welcome. So I know that you're 21, and The Sims has been out for almost 21 years. So basically, oh, wow. you were born in the year 2000. I would assume. Um, oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, well, 1999. But um, oh, you're a 90s baby. I love that. Yes. <sighs> 96 out here in the street <laughs> yeah i i barely made it like i <laughs> uh I, w I was able to still like fit into into the 90s and i love that <laughs> mm -hmm. i think the 90s was a good good era for sure um so how long have you been playing the sims like what was like your first like game you've ever played at the sim um okay so i think i must have been around like six or seven when one of my neighbor friends introduced me to the sims 2 on the pc of their like bigger sister and um yeah whenever sh uh, their bigger sister would let me play or let us play with the sims 2 we would just i don't know go off and, <laughs> and do all crazy stuff you can do as like a seven-year-old in the sims you know like make sims woohoo ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, very very exciting stuff back in the days and um yeah i don't know since then i kind of i developed like a really like big love for that game and let's say i don't really remember a lot of playing the sims 2 um, I guess it was because it was like between me being like seven and 10. And then when I was like 11, um, I think, well, oh no, not even like, I think, oh yes, I was 11. Then The Sims 3 released. And that that was when I really got into The Sims um, because I I played it like here and then before. But like when The Sims 3 came out, I was, that was like my main thing in my life like I always I was kind of bullied in school and I also didn't have a lot of friends so whenever I went mm -hmm. home The Sims 3 was like my safe haven and um I just loved playing in it I loved like creating my own type of stories and yeah it was a lot of fun so I I was really addicted to it I would say I spend more time playing The Sims than I would spend time being <laughs> in school <laughs> um also if you're listening to this and you're still in school please <laughs> that's bad advice don't do it but uh, that's, that, yeah. that's definitely what, what happened um for me but uh yeah, I kind of, through the end of my school years, I kind of got back into school and kind of um, was able to graduate anyway. But yeah, the the Sims 3 was a really big part of my life. And then The Sims 4 released. And ever since, I've been playing that and started creating content with The Sims 4 in 2018 when I had like a, a foot accident and I couldn't really move. So I kind of spent my days building Sims houses and I was like, hey, why don't I record that and upload that to YouTube? And I've been doing that ever since with like a, some breaks here and there. But uh, yeah, that's, wow. <laughs> that's my history of playing The Sims. Wow. Well, that's cool. I mean, you had a long history. Like, I feel you on that where I spent more time playing The Sims and schooling. Grades dropped here and there. But, you know, the usual. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, The Sims 2 was my ultimate favorite. The Sims 3 I didn't play as much, but I loved it a lot. Would you say like The Sims 3 is like your ultimate favorite game that you've played? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. The thing is, like I said, like I didn't really play The Sims 2 as much because I, I think I also didn't really understand what was going on with expansion packs and stuff like i like i was so young i feel like when the sims 3 came out i really dove into that don't know why but to this day like i guess now it's the nostalgia obviously because you spend so much time playing that game that you really get like emotional thinking about it and think about that time and i guess that's why i now say that the sims 3 is my favorite game of them all um but yeah i don't really have a big connection to the sims 2 and honestly the sims 1 i've played i played it once on playstation and that was it so yeah i'm definitely not an og but um <laughs> yeah i like the sims 2 as well like i actually i also grabbed the deal when it was on origin like that big collection and it was for free um, oh that's I good i managed to get that one but it's for some reason a little like hard to make it work i guess because you have to i don't know like install mods and stuff for it to work properly i don't remember what that was about exactly but yeah 
Sims 3 is, is, is my big love. I'm sorry <laughs> to say oh, no. that to like a Sims 2, <laughs> 2 stand, but yeah, that's the truth. Oh no, I totally understand. Like I know a lot of people throughout the years are more of like a Sims 3 like fan stand just because like it's it was open world, it had everything that you needed and it yeah. was just like kind of in that middle of era where people were like at the appropriate age of understanding that was actually happening. So I, I I understand for sure. Like, what's your most favorite thing about The Sims 3? Like, mine would be just, like, the whole idea of The Sims 3 Generations. That was my ultimate favorite pack in The Sims 3. But, yeah, like, why is it your favorite, though? Um, well, The Sims 3, I guess, um, my favorite pack ever in The Sims 3 that I loved playing them with and still love doing it um, is island paradise because i just love running resorts um for me being able to have a life simulator but at the same time being able to s somehow simulate like that business or yeah something like that and to build up something like that was like cool for me because i always loved stupid online games weird like gaming sites which were free and you could like build your own hotel or something and i oh, used to yeah. play that a lot when i was a child and then um this game like that expansion pack came out and you were able to do both like run a hotel and just play the sims and i thought that was amazing so to this day i really really want a sims 4 hotel or resort expansion pack because then my life would be complete honestly um but yeah i understand your, your generation's pick because i think that's an awesome pack as well and i feel like we could use that in the sims 4 too just because honestly the things like the proms the tree houses, the, the everything, like oh. the daycare job. It's just, yeah. it's everything is, it, it's awesome. And I love that because I'm also here for realism. Like when I play The Sims, I don't really do a lot of gameplay anymore. But when I do, I like doing it with like a lot of realism. And that's something that The Sims 3 generation definitely added to the game. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like that, that pack alone just makes my life just go, go round. From like the walking canes, the tree houses, the prom, oh, yeah. the graduation, after school activities, even teaching your teens how to drive was oh my God, the highlight you. of my life. Oh yeah. my God, that's true. I love and like, that. Like, do you remember? Because like the Sims 3 Generations had um, this video camera that you could record literally anything and then display oh, it on yes. the TV. Like I'm yes. the same way. I I love realism. And so being able to kind of reflect real life into my Sims life makes it so much better for me to enjoy the game and like do all these different things with them. So hopefully yeah. one day, crossing my fingers, we get a generations or like some type of resort uh pack in the Sims 4 in the future. Oh yeah. Like maybe both combined, then we'd both be happy. Wouldn't that be a dream? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> So The Sims has been around for like so long, but like what's one thing that you would change or add into The Sims and what would it be and why? Do you mean like in if it was like the current Sims game or like yeah. for example for like okay. Well, something that I would change would probably be Oh, yes. Oh, girl, I have my number one thing because as a builder, that is something that I am waiting for, like not waiting because I know that it's not going to happen anymore. But I really want that to be a thing in The Sims 4, uh, in The Sims 5. Oh, my God. Which oh, is gosh. Um, the swatch system, because honestly, oh, creative style in The Sims 3, it was super messy. I understand that it's hard to do it um, properly, even like, if you have all of the expansion packs installed, it's probably just going to be a mess. But I really like the swatch system system that was in the sims 2 when you were for example like changing counters or beds where you could like choose different countertops to like the to the cabinet swatches if that makes sense yeah so yeah. and the same thing goes for beds like the the bed frames had uh, you could combine like different bed frame swatches with like bed sheet swatches and something like that but for like more items definitely not only these two categories and also i don't know if there were many like more um item categories in the sims 2 that had that feature but these are the two that i do remember and i would love that to be a feature because i feel so limited sometimes in the sims 4 when i'm furnishing uh, especially like building is kind of okay but like when it comes to furnishing in the sims 4 i always feel like I don't know. I don't I, like I see these amazing interiors that people do on Twitter and I just don't know how they do them because when I get when I see those swatches that we get in The Sims 4, I'm just not pleased because 
it's hard to make things match. And like yeah. with like a better swatch system, that is definitely something that I need. Because honestly, gameplay wise, gameplay wise, I'm I'm okay. I know a lot of people are upset that gameplay in The Sims 4 is kind of bland or whatever they want to call it. And that may be, but as I'm a, like a builder, I don't really care about the gameplay stuff. So that is definitely my thing that I would change. I I agree with you. Like I'm a builder through and through. So one day I really just hope that we get some type of like at least more swatches or like matching swatches because I, I do love the sims 2 like swatch system because yeah. it, you can like pick and choose like the bed from like the pillows or the cover and all the counters and everything but the one thing i did not like is that every time you wanted to update something in live mode in building by you have a sim on there it will cost you money and i was like oh no that's there's no way because my sims are always broke and it's like a constant of like you know updating wait. and everything wait that was a thing like in the sims 2 where yeah. you couldn't change the swatch do you mean that well like no because if you have a sim on your lot like you're playing a family but you wanted to yes. update the like a bed or a fridge or whatever it will cost you money to like oh, update like, it you mean yeah. like to replace or to change the swatch to change the swatch oh wow oh my god i don't remember that at all that's insane I, I think mean, it was 15 simoleons, I believe. I mean, it's kind of realistic, not going to lie. And like I said, I'm like a, like a realistic type of gameplay person. I also have like the mod installed in The Sims 3 where you have to drive to the grocery store before you can cook anything at home and like, you know, just buy some groceries because I just love that detail. But I, I understand what you mean. <laughs> like my Sims are always, always broke. Um, So... Makes sense, but it's, oh my God, The Sims 2 has so many features that I don't remember that I also constantly see being posted on Twitter and people being like amazed by that. And I also am. So yeah. Oh yeah. I'm always amazed. I'm like, how do you do all these things? Like I've been playing this game for almost 21 years. Like how do you do? And I can't do like, teach me your ways. I need to know True. these things. Like that. Like recently I saw that animation of how a sim cooked where they like get stuff from the cupboards and I don't know all of these details or when the when the TV is like broken you have to push it back to yeah oh, basically yeah. if you fix it you have to push it back to its its initial position to watch it again it's just yeah it's another level to be honest compared to newer animations <laughs> we weren't ready for the sims 2 because coming from the sims 1 to the sims 2 is like wait a minute wait a minute hold up yeah, i huge jump. i can't process <laughs> oh man i just i just think throughout the years the community has evolved in a i would say a good and bad way depending on how you look at it but the community has definitely grown from making like YouTube content, streaming, um, posting photos on the internet, or just doing like yeah. telling random stories that they wanted to share with the internet. That it's just great to know. It's been around for so long. Like, what's been like your favorite memory that you remember about being a part of this community? Being a part of this community. Well, because like I said, I haven't been really introduced into the community before 2020 I've been in there like in 2018 but not for too long because then I started like studying and then I kind of um yeah hold, held back a little bit to focus on studying but um of course. I would say that honestly the my favorite thing uh community wise was well there's two things because one of I don't know if one of them counts because it was sort of by EA and not by the community itself but I really like that they did um, make these these surveys in 2020. Like I think oh, that yeah. was a great thing to add to the Sims community and to sort of involve them in the making of packs and decisions and stuff. So I really like that. But like community wise, I would say um, all the collabs that I was invited to be part of, or yeah, that I was just able to be part of that I that we were made like in 2020. For example, like you mentioned it before. Or did you, I think it was in the beginning of the podcast, like the Harry Potter world by some Yeah. Things. Yeah, other collabs that were amazing with amazing people where you were able to just chat on Discord and I don't know, uh, get to know some people. That was great for me. Probably a very basic answer, but yeah, these oh, two things are what comes to my mind first. Not basic at all. I, I honestly agree with you. I think the whole idea for like the community, it's that making that genuine like 
connections to other people and being able to relate about like the Sims or, you know, real life or anything like that. It's, it's a great way to like make friends. And that's probably like my favorite moment as well. Just being able to like meet people and, you know, relate and not feel like a weirdo because half of the time when you speak about Sims in real life, people think you're crazy. So. Oh my God, definitely. Like I, I see you there. Like I, um, when like this, the things we're doing now, like talking to each other as simmers and creators and or just interacting with each other on Twitter and stuff like I wouldn't have been able to imagine that when I was like, I don't know, like 12 or 13 playing The Sims 3 because like there, I, there probably was like a small community, but I feel like it wasn't as big as it is now. And it's crazy like how it's evolved. And um, it's amazing because back then I didn't really have anyone to share my love for The Sims with, except for for that weird online feature that came with Showtime that probably never anybody used. It's amazing that we can now share stuff with each other and just connect. Yeah, I forgot about that online feature because I looked at it and like, I don't want to do that. It looks weird. It seems to <laughs> look right. Because I think it's you could... Strange. Because couldn't you send your, like, your sim to like, another person's world and perform there? Because I don't yeah, remember. Like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> it's like, that seems so weird. Like, I don't understand why we had that feature. Because I never, I didn't really use Showtime that much. I was like, I'm a mainly family really? game player. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, I did like the Acrobat and other things, but I didn't really like use it, use it to my like full advantage. Because I mainly mm. like, just use like Ambitions, Generation, Seasons, yes. and university and that was pretty much it so like i wasn't really that high like you know excited about it but i used it here and there um, yeah i am actually like that's like one of the other things i was obsessed with when i was playing the sims 3 was like celebrity stuff and singing and all of that yeah stuff you could be able to do in showtime like i thought that was super exciting back then i guess i thought that i'm going to be a pop star one day so i was i was probably feeling the need to prep <laughs> uh for that and um yeah i i love showtime i gotta be honest and uh, another thing you mentioned university i just realized that that's also one of my all-time favorite packs for the sims 3 um not for the sims 4 because honestly it's so hard like i played it once and it's just it was it was just very tough like i feel like university and the sims 3 is super easy and yeah. I, don't know, I loved going there and um achieving like good grades while absolutely failing in real life <laughs> but um whatever I, I I I feel you because with The Sims Four, it's uh I realize it's hard. I did it with Bob pa- uh, Bob Pancakes. He had a kid, and then he was like dealing with like you know real life stuff with his wife Eliza, and dealing with the divorce and yeah. socializing and the grades and the school. Like it was crazy, but he managed to get all straight A's, four point all of his Ooh. terms. It was a struggle though. It was oh, a wow. lot. <laughs> That's um, insane. I, I I was never able to do that in The Sims 4. And like the thing is, I was like when that pack came out, I was still in university. So I was low-key stressing at the same exact time. Cause <laughs> you didn't have a moment to like eat, breathe, or do anything. So I, yeah. I kind of reflected that into mm. The Sims 4. Where at The Sims 3, though, I don't know, it felt like it was like you were there and then you were gone because it felt very short to me, which is like yes. it's okay, but I believe that with The Sims 3, I didn't like how you could, you couldn't like really go to your family neighborhood because you were mm. basically just stuck on the campus and it just didn't feel right. I don't know. Yeah. I, I needed that connection. I needed to see the family. I needed the food. <laughs> That makes actually really like sense. I feel like when the Sims 3 developers like created the game, they probably didn't. I feel like they must have been like when they created university, they were like, oh, God, we won't be able to make the Sims visit their homes because I feel like that's like a major thing. I don't know. Was it possible in the Sims 2? I feel like it was. Well, right? so you, you it was kind of like an open world in a way, but you couldn't really go home. Like oh. you could, you could, like you could travel to your like your um your home like main neighborhood and go to like to the shops and everything, but you couldn't travel to other Sims houses in The Sims oh. too. So you're mainly okay. like stuck at your house and the community lots basically. Okay. Yeah. So like they they have gradually evolved to like evolved to like meeting other Sims in your surrounding area and and more, which is great. Like every generation of The Sims has just made it better. Yes. Of like 
more like so like for like gameplay and like some somewhere replayability here and there, but it definitely has changed. I would say for the better. Uh, for me, I feel like I mean sometimes it, I feel like it's really difficult to make it work for everyone because um, it's weird not to visit your family at all when you're like at uni, but at, at the same time it's really weird to just randomly see Judith Ward walking around on your university campus. Um, so, I, so I guess yeah, it's really hard to to kind of find the middle of it um, when it comes to these things. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, I feel you when you when you're saying that they did evolve. Um, quite great. Oh, most definitely, especially with the graphics. <laughs> mm. Things have changed. Things have True. definitely changed. So I wanted to ask you. I've I love Simproved. I love Harry Potter. How did that happen? Like I I'm pretty sure Fry contacted you saying, "Hey, Paul, you want to be part of this collab? I'm doing a Harry Potter save file." Like, how did that even happen? Um, okay. So, well, it wasn't like that, actually. It was, oh. um, first of all, yeah, I love Fry too. She's amazing. Um, she's, uh, she's a huge inspiration. And, uh, yeah, I kind of got to know her, um, in 2020, started watching her streams after being a long time fan of her videos. And, um, yeah, I kind of also then joined her discord and I was pretty active there. And, uh, we were like talking a lot and playing games a lot. And then I kind of realized that there was um, uh, something about like that was they were like talking about this Harry Potter project. And there was that channel for it. And I didn't really understand what that was for. And I just asked what was going on. What is that? And um, it turned out that it's like this huge collab. And uh, by the way, if you're listening to this now, it's available <laughs> for download on Zimfileshare. Um, and you're probably going to find it on Fry's aka Improved's um, Twitter account. And it's like this great collab where the whole world of Windenburg is transformed into a world with lots only built by, um, yeah, only filled with um, built from the Harry Potter series, like, for example, Hogwarts or Gringotts or Diagon Alley and all that cool stuff. And it's built by Simproved and her community. And uh, when I asked what that was and if if I could be part of this still, because uh, there, anybody was able to be part of this, um, and there was some lots left that were empty. And so they said, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, feel free to be a part of it. And that way I kind of got to be part of that. And um, I first built a... Um, Tom Riddle's orphanage. It's like Voldemort's um, kind of yeah childhood home. Yeah, and, uh, because that was something that was still in need to build. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna do that. Uh, it was actually um, something Harry Potter World related. It was also my first stream ever. Um, oh, I, I remember that one. Which, yeah, uh, I built St. Mungo's Hospital, which is a hospital that's only from the book and uh, not ever in the movies, but I never even finished it. <laughs> but I started <laughs> building it on, on Twitch. And um, yeah, the second one, because there was still like something left and nobody had built on Evanders yet. I was like, hey, Fry, can I maybe build another one? Because I would love to build Ollivanders. And she was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And yeah, we kind of tried to finish this whole project until Christmas. But then my lot was actually causing problems because I did something stupid. I used a lot of tool mod and well, it wasn't probably, well, it probably wasn't my fault, but in the end we figured out that it was the platforms that were just uh, mm. buggy as hell and we had to delete them all and just redo the lot. And um, that's why we were only able to release on New Year's Eve, I think. And, uh, but yeah, it's available now. And it was a great journey. Like, it was so much fun. And it's not over yet. Like, we're still um, thinking about making it bigger. For example, like, turning, um, I think it was, it's called Midnight Hollow or Moonlight. Oh, Ooh, no, I think it's Wait. Forgotten Hollow. No, oh, my God. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. <laughs> Forgotten Hollow and um, um, Glimmerbrook into the safe hall, but we'll see. Ooh, um, I'm excited. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Like I am a Harry Potter stan. I have not really, I have not read the books. And people say you should read the books before the movies. And like, I am not a reader. I can, I'm not that good at reading, to be honest, or speaking. So I just watch the movies instead. And I went back to you know, skim here and there for the books to understand a little bit more, but I don't know. I I think that the you you all did a really great job on the entire safe file in itself. Like I was blown away. I'm like, how in the world did this happen? Like, it's crazy. Aww. It's Thank huge. You so like, much. 
I was watching your videos, like Dion, Di- Diagon Alley and then uh, Oral Vanters. I am like, how? Like, I just want to take your hands and put on my hands. Just basically take your <laughs> skills. Because I'm like, how does he do what he do? Like, I just seriously don't even know. Like, you're so talented at building. Oh, thank you so, so much. First of all, you're amazingly talented as well. Um, definitely. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I love watching your videos. Even though I don't comment on everyone because it's just sometimes I'm in a watch streak. And uh, I do love watching your videos as well. So this means a lot uh, for me that you're saying that. And uh, yeah, like it's, there's so many amazing creators in uh, that are in this project. Like how Fry did that big, big Hogwarts build, I can't imagine. It's just amazing and insane. And it's just great. Like so many people worked on that and um, it's crazy. Like that way you can see that, for example, a lot of people also worked on that that are not content creators that are just like um, doing it as a, hobby i mean i guess we're also doing it as a hobby but you know what i mean like they don't yeah. really share it anywhere or stuff and uh, they were really able to put all of their creativity and stuff that they usually only use for themselves and put it into this project and they were getting a platform for that so there's also amazing creators there which yeah one can follow on the gallery because they don't really post like on social media or stuff but like they 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 just went off with amazing uh, yeah builds. i need to like i need to check it out for myself i need to download the actual file to explore oh, yes. everything cuz just looking at the like overview of the map of like the harry potter world it's like i want to live there now i want to live the harry potter life like i'm not kidding go into gryffindor and just live my life cuz right that's all i need <laughs> in life like it, like the map also it's amazing it's created like by nando um Mm -hmm. also like a similar friend of mine and um also from germany and uh yeah he did an amazing job and i feel like all the builds fit so well into windenburg and it it really does look magical so i'm i'm super proud of this project and i'm also super thankful that i was able to be part of that yeah and yeah um, i don't know i mean it's march now i mean right now it's january when we're recording this but uh it's march now so a lot of stuff can could have happened by now maybe we already got version two out maybe we didn't i guess we'll see about that um (laughs) you never know um so since i'm a gryffindor what's your harry potter house um my harry potter house is ravenclaw so okay yeah uh, I don't, don't, don't really see myself in that one. Uh, but I did the test. No, I didn't really do the test twice, but I was once at like a Harry Potter exhibition and, um, there was like a sorting hat that you could put on and it would tell you like your house. And for some time I did relate to that. And I was like, okay, that is my house, blah, blah, blah. And he, he told me I'm a Hufflepuff and now no shade to Hufflepuff people or anything, but I just felt like it was quite random, you know, because like, you're just like, it's probably just automatically generated houses. So I was like, it's stupid to stick to that. So I did the test and, um, it turned out to be Ravenclaw. So I guess I'm super clever or something. <laughs> Interesting. Cause I was going to say like, Oh, Slytherin. I don't know about that. I mean, I have nothing against Slytherin or other, the other houses, but you know, some are different than others. They have different, you know, qualities wait, you're Slytherin? oh no i'm a gryffindor <laughs> oh okay because I was, I was like wait what didn't he say he's a gryffindor okay no yeah. i am 100 gryffindor all the way through i might take the quiz again to see if it changes but i already know i might be either a hufflepuff i don't really know we'll have to see i might I just mean, take the quiz again no. <laughs> <laughs> i mean kind of you know stay on brand here <laughs> <laughs> true I mean, um, Gryffindor also has some yellow, I guess. So uh, true. It doesn't match. So you've been doing YouTube for almost three years because you started in 2018. What inspired you the most to like start creating content on YouTube? Like you said, you had like a foot injury, but that started. But like, what really like yeah. inspired you to do it? So I have been posting YouTube videos before that were not Sims related. Um, oh. It was like that James Charles thing where he, I don't know, I feel like he used to do DIYs and now he's doing like makeup. I'm kind of the same. Like I uploaded like random videos also in German um, that were, I don't know, like super 
genuine and normal and like not special ordinary stuff nobody looked it up and yeah I stopped <laughs> and <laughs> then I had that foot injury and I really got back into playing the synth because there was nothing else I could do all day and I started like building rebuilding houses from Pinterest like I um, looked at cute houses and was like rebuilding them house after house and I was like oh my god this is kind of cool and I started sharing them on the gallery and people were like appreciating them yeah and uh, yeah it kind of inspired me to share it more and I was like wait there's so many great simmers that I also used to watch back then but I never really thought to I don't know, do these kinds of videos because it really wasn't, was super different from what I've done before. And because I started like almost everybody with speed builds and I thought, okay, why not do that? So I did that. Uh, it was around the time when Seasons came out. So I was inspired to build like a Seasons craftsman home with all the new beautiful uh, uh, like um, items we got. And yeah, uh, I, I did it the similar way that I did it before. Like I looked at Pinterest reference pictures and just sort of tried to do something similar and um, yeah, make it fit. Like now looking at that build, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's awful. Like I, I can't, it's, I don't know why I did what I did there, but um, for also like, I mean, but I guess everyone feels like that looking at their first or like, yeah. I don't know, first couple of videos. Um, but I was yeah. not satisfied seeing that now, but I feel like it's part of my journey. But yeah, that was kind of my inspiration, you could say. Like being looking at Pinterest, seeing all of these beautiful houses, and I was like, wait, like you could do that in The Sims. Because before before that, I never really looked up reference pictures or anything. I just built what I built and it wasn't great. So I had the idea to somehow make my builds better and that kind of inspired me to share that with people because till now like Pinterest is like a huge inspiration for me like a lot of like architectural elements that I put into my builds I've seen somewhere else before like it's not as if everything I build is from scratch because I'm not an architect <laughs> <laughs> neither am um, I and yeah oh yeah I feel you on that because like the Pinterest is like a great place I use it 24 7 for like inspo pics for photography or graphic design illustration or like sim builds actually or just a way I want to stylize a sim and create a sim and yeah. just like pick and choose what I like and kind of just go with it and see what happens. I, I just think that I think everyone should definitely sh like try and do a way where they have like a Pinterest account and just pin random stuff to their boards for like inspiration, whether it's for Sims or not, or just other things, actually, just because it's just a great resource for a lot yeah, of things. Definitely. And also people like ask me a lot if like how they get better at building and stuff and they just kind of want to have tips or something. And that's also like my number one tip, like look up Pinterest and try to rebuild stuff uh, because you're slowly going to get a feeling for what's going to look great and whatnot. And then like after some time, like you're kind of going to develop your own style of building and uh, it's going to help you a lot, I guess. So oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Pinterest is awesome, um, really. It is. Yeah, I, I wish one day, one day I want to get sponsored by Pinterest for something because that would be oh, a dream. Oh, Imagine, true. be great. Even Zillow, one of those oh, two. Yeah, Zillow. I was like, <laughs> I'm looking at all of these sponsored Zillow videos and I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. Like, it, I would love to do one of those collaborations. So, yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> one day, you um, never know. <laughs> uh, since you've been on YouTube for two years, almost three, you've had a lot of experience and, you know, a lot of videos, a lot of time editing. Like, what's been your experience like since starting? Because there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Like, what's been your experience like dealing with all of that? Okay, so pros is definitely, I feel like I got more confident just because I was speaking to people about stuff I created. Uh, on a regular basis and I kind of yeah developed a confidence because if you listen to one of my first videos I sound like I don't know like a like super quiet shy person and I feel like I did kind of evolve if that makes sense so yeah uh, that's definitely a pro and also experience just like that I I learned how to be better at video editing and um yeah learned about audio stuff you know all that stuff that comes when you have to produce a video mm -hmm. and um 
Yeah. So, and also like I kind of got to know The Sims 4 quite well because I basically played it like at least once or twice a week. So that's also something that came with that. And of course, meeting all these people, because now that I get the stuff I, I'm making in The Sims uh, out to people, I I do get like conversations and comments and stuff. So it's really nice to meet new people. Uh, as I already said, I feel like that's definitely a pro. And also it's I don't really have other hobbies right now except for building in the Sims because I feel like all of my creativity goes into that and yeah I'm fine with that like I I of course kind of want to look for another one because honestly content creation as your only hobby can be pretty dangerous but that is that's something I'm going to dive into in a second I want to find something else as well but for now, I'm like super fine with it because I, I'm studying like IT. So I code Ooh. a lot and it's very like theoretical and sometimes like to have like a creative outlet is great. So that's like the pros. And honestly, the, the contra is only that sometimes you feel a, kind of pressured by the algorithm and by YouTube and yeah, by like people that um, do actually watch your content because sometimes it's just... Hard to believe that there's actually like a couple of thousand people that yeah. watch your content on a regular basis and it's just, um, okay, no pressure at all. So, for example, today, because I've been like a little slow um, with videos for the past few weeks because I've been spending time with my family, my views and like all the stuff that you can see in the in the devilish creator studio mm. were like very negative. And it was like, hey, this and that is down 50%. And I like... Like I was like, I was opening that page today and I closed it super quickly because yeah, that can really like it did control my life for some time in 2020 and it was a hard time. And I, um, and I'm super glad that I kind of got like away from that and that I don't look at those numbers, but that's definitely one of the negatives that you, after some time you kind of feel pressured to do stuff. And when that happens, you should probably back off a little bit. So yeah, because yeah. it can be dangerous for your mental health and for everything basically it definitely can i i agree cuz 2020 was like the year of like just at home sitting and just making content like i i feel you cuz the youtube studio is not a great place it's not i deleted the the app off of my phone i was going to like ask you about yeah. that too cuz i don't know social media in general is a little bit overwhelming sometimes yeah. and it can definitely put a damper a lot on your mental health and how you're feeling and when like you're consumed about all the numbers like how you're performing and like who's gonna watch what and what they're yes. gonna like like or dislike and it's just it's just it's, kind of a it's a lot it, it's a lot it's it's definitely a lot and uh, i also deleted it from my phone for a while i i have it back on it now uh because i needed to um but i'm probably going to delete it back or like not back but like delete it again <laughs> now uh that i'm um back home uh because it's just I, when i'm posting like a video i i usually i spend so much time looking i or like i did spend so much time looking my, at my phone on the youtube studio and just refreshing and refreshing just I, I was like obsessed it like no joke it was it it's it's awful and um it's it's it consumes you <laughs> i just yeah. don't want it <laughs> so um and but at the same time i feel like i can't be that mad on to youtube about youtube studio because it's nice to have actually like a a way to see how your content is doing like if you want to see it then you can do it i feel like yeah. i feel like it's a point that jesse or like plumbella made in one of her videos um or like in one in like her like YouTube studio video. I think she made a video about that, about certainly that. And she said that it would be amazing if we could just like sort of choose what numbers we want to see and whatnot. And if we were able to choose, if we want to see these, I don't know, percentages and all of that scary stuff, because that would really help if we had, if we just had a function to turn it off for a while. Oh, that, that would be great because I don't like when uh, it says you're doing great and the next day it's like you're doing terrible. Stop oh uploading. My yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that that is so true. Like it ha like I for a while because when when um what is it like Snowy Escape released, I uh, had it like a really great stats because um a lot of people came to my channel and were new and I was like 
super excited and full of adrenaline and I just wanted to keep producing videos. And then YouTube started to compliment me in YouTube studio about how my videos are doing. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it, I sort of got high <laughs> by all of that, you could say. Yeah. And, um, and then like it slowly disappeared and I was like, oh, that is uh, disappointing. <laughs> so yeah, can be a lot. Yeah, I just, one day it'll change. The algorithm will be like, you know, we're just going to keep it neutral. We're going to make everyone feel good instead of terrible. Cause yeah, it's like the, the algorithm is hard. It's really, it's... It's kind of hard to understand for sure, like what to do to make your videos like, you know, popular and get on the trending yeah. page, you know? So... Yeah been trying to like again trying to like you said before you want to like do another hobby besides building and i i feel because i went to school for ui and ux design so i'm like dibble dabbling in like again coding and illustration and stuff like that making websites and apps to you know diversify myself in the things that i do and how i can kind of connect it to the sims because all the things yeah. that i do whether it's like illustration like how can i connect illustration to the sims like the sims have consumed my life i've been making oh. content on youtube for 10 years That's so insane. i feel like it's consumed my body like it's a part of me i am a sim i just produce content <laughs> of sims no matter what it is yeah that's crazy first of all congrats on 10 years i totally didn't know that um but I understand what you mean. Like a lot of, I feel like at some point you just have to start saying, okay, I'm doing this for me now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to focus on the Sims. I'm just doing something entirely different just because sometimes, like I said, like it can consume you. But yeah. um, as long as I feel like I'm, I'm in a stable place right now considering mental health. So yeah, I feel like I'm okay, but I, I can, I can imagine that a lot of people. I like it. Like it can be much for a lot of people and like not me excluded because anything can happen, you know? Yeah, that's true. And I, I feel like with, with being on like YouTube for so long or just like, we're just a few years or just starting, it can be a little bit overwhelming at times for sure. Cause you never really know what you want to do, like, or what you want to upload or how you're going to upload or when you're going to do it. So like you will upload once a week and I watch your videos every week. Cause it's just great. Like you're a Scandinavian Aww. home. You just upload it. Great time. Um, I still have to finish it though. Cause I'm like halfway through, but um, like you have definitely kept a, a very consistent schedule. I have to see. And that's really good. I would say like consistency is always key uh, for me personally. And you manage it very well from from the like as a viewer standpoint it looks like you have everything together like how do you yeah. find the balance between like like uni youtube twitch social media all that stuff like what works best for you first of all i don't have everything together <laughs> all the time <laughs> it's uh it's sort of um yeah i did struggle with doing with separating these two things and especially when miss rona came over um i it was hard because i had to study from home and yeah doing that and also making content was weird because every time i was making content i was like hey i could i could probably like study right now instead of this and every time i was like studying i was like hey i should probably make a video because i haven't one like ready for next week so that was sort of hard and um, so something I came up with when this semester started, which was around October, was a schedule that I worked out. So I basically, it was just a simple schedule. I put it onto paper and it told me uh, what kind of stuff I had to do from Monday to Sunday. And um, I had these little slots, which I always filled with, for example, um, um, classes and uh, when I wanted to take some time to finish um, my like class work and stuff and I also edit in my Twitch streams and also times when I wanted to record and build stuff for YouTube and um, I, when I filled everything in I quickly realized that I wasn't even that busy or like as busy as I expected it was just that I was because I was all over the place and my life was just not scheduled. And that kind of led to a lot of procrastination, which mm -hmm. kind of really stole away my time. And um, when I wrote everything down that I had to do like weekly, I realized how many empty time slots I actually have that I would usually like 
probably spend with procrastinating because I just, yeah, don't really have a schedule. So um, I made myself a schedule where I was that I was able to follow and it actually made it possible for me to post two YouTube videos every week since I think I started doing that. Yeah, like since the beginning of November or something. And like I said, I've, I've been a little slow the last few weeks because I spent time at my family family's place and I just wasn't good enough at pre-recording. Like I have to kind of um, practice that a little bit. But yeah, that's kind of my way to go with it. But honestly, uni and school always comes first. Like um, that's something I got to say. Um, and sometimes it's hard to put it first because of the algorithm and because of what YouTube Studio tells you. But for God's sake, just do it. Like it's more important than YouTube and uh, I, I try to tell that to myself every day yeah um, yeah I do the same thing it's it's a balance trying to figure out everything you just gotta write things on paper and I realize that you know I feel like paper is more reliable than like digital like if you type it in like a google right? calendar yes. it doesn't feel like it's real or like it's there so it just yeah. feels weird it's like Definitely. paper is like you can look at it, you see it every day, it's right in front of you. And it's like, okay, I can stick to the schedule. I have things, you know, in place and it's much easier. Like for this podcast, I even like planned out everything on paper because it was much easier for me to do it that yeah. way than like digitally. Um, Definitely. And, like, but yeah. I feel like, that. Like, yeah. I never, I never really put anything well for example when i'm going shopping or something that i probably will take a note in my notes app but that's it like everything else i'm not a big planner but if i plan stuff i always do it on paper it's i feel like it's the little things for example now this this schedule is right in front of my like i'm looking at it now because it's like um glued to my desk shelf and or like not glued but like <laughs> like tacked I don't even know how to call that um but um it's like here and I can visually see it all the time and that little thing sort of motiv motivates me to stick to it and like it's these little things and if I have it in my phone and I'm just getting constant reminders of doing something I don't it's not the same for me so I totally get you. Yeah. I would say that, uh, you know, life goes on as you do it. You learn, you live and you learn, you learn new things every single day. Oh, yeah. And since you have been doing YouTube and you've learned so many things throughout your time, I'm sure you get questions about this all the time. Like, how do I start? What do I do? How do I do all this stuff? What program should I start with? Like, what are some tips for like beginners who are wanting to get into YouTube or content creation in general? Like, what should they focus more on? Well, I think it's definitely, well, first of all, be 100% sure that your content is good. Because if I feel like if you're not positive about that, then, or like if you're not confident about your content enough, yeah, I feel like you're more successful if you, if you feel comfortable with it. So don't do anything that you're... Um, feeling like it would just maybe boost your clicks, but at the same time, you're not enjoying it. Like, for example, I started with speed builds because I felt really comfortable just talking into the microphone, not showing my face, but like talking a little bit about that thing I love, which is building. And uh, yeah, so definitely feel comfortable with what you're doing and be 100% sure that um, you like your own content that you put out. And another thing, well, the quality of your video um, is very important. I feel like if you do some research on YouTube on how to record gameplay or audio uh, for a speed build or for a gaming video in general, I feel like you can find a lot of great sources that explain it very well to you. And I feel like since I've been, yes, yeah, I've been like educating myself and like editing and stuff since, I don't know, like since I've started doing these other YouTube videos, so mm -hmm. I wasn't exactly like a newbie when I started doing the speed builds. But yeah, you can learn so much from researching that on YouTube because a lot of times when I click on videos on YouTube and they're like the quality isn't that awesome and and the audio quality is on is isn't that awesome as well. I find myself being easier not not focused on the video as much if it was like better. But I of course know that a lot of people don't have the hardware or can't afford um, the the software that um, could make that possible. So I totally understand that, but definitely focus on that. I feel like audio and video quality is like the key um, when it comes to 
trying to gain someone's attention. And uh, I started, I don't know, like I could go deeper into what software and what microphones and stuff I started using. But the thing is that I already had a quite a professional setup because I did, I made like some image films for some companies before I yeah, started doing YouTube and stuff. So I had like a quite nice setup already. So it doesn't, it's not really a beginner setup, but yeah, oh. quite amazing information on YouTube and stuff. Um, on that. And yeah, also if you want to get your stuff out there, be part of the community, like uh, make yourself um, a social media account and uh, start tweeting about your videos and stuff like that can always help. Um, it did for me. Um, I never was really a Twitter person, but when I started doing YouTube, I made myself a Twitter as well because I knew that was a way to get my stuff out there. And uh, it worked <laughs> because I'm here now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I, I think social media does help a lot when it comes to creating content, whether it's like Twitter or Instagram. But I feel like more people use Twitter because everyone's on it. Yes. Especially like the Sims community, like all the gurus are on there. The Sims official Twitter is on there, even on Instagram, too. But I feel like they're more you get more of a connection on Twitter. Yeah than like on other platforms so definitely it's also where i'm most active at like i do post on instagram but it's like mostly to promote my videos and now that sounds a little how can i say it like it sounds weird but um like i love connecting with you guys on instagram as well and i do um like chat with a lot of viewers there and um also with other content creators definitely but it's like the real deal <laughs> happens on Twitter, I feel like. Oh, most um, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, well, that was great. I have some rapid fire questions for you to ask okay. you. <laughs> um, so Fighting. what's one thing that you're excited about that's coming up in 2020, whether it's like real life, movies, music, et cetera? Like what's the most exciting thing you're looking for in 2021? Um, okay. So I guess the most exciting thing is probably, um, now this is a Sims thing again, because I feel like I, the, now because of COVID, I'm afraid to have expectations to 2021. Super mm -hmm. weird. And uh, I, for example, I would say like an awesome summer vacation in in summer, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But, but that would be the thing that I would be looking for for now. Because I don't know, like for some reason, that's like the only thing that's on my mind for the last few weeks. Like I just really want to chill on a beach in the sun. I would love to do that. Um, But otherwise... Yeah, I do have some some nice projects um, in planning for my YouTube uh, channel and for yeah The Sims in general, which may include the words save file uh, that um, oh. yeah, I, I, I do not know if that is going to work. So I'm not even like, I feel like this here, I mean, this is going to come out in March. So maybe you're going to have heard from that. Maybe you will. I'm not sure. But yeah, that is something that I'm making my mind up right now. Um, at, about right now and yeah that's something that I'm really excited and yeah just to do more stuff on YouTube that is outside of my comfort zone like I've been starting to do that in the past year um where I didn't only upload speed builds and I kind of want to do more stuff like that and um yeah that's also something I'm looking forward to yeah doing oh. more face cam stuff and all that jazz and streaming streaming I love streaming um Ooh. so yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for you to start streaming again because I was like, where's where's Paul? I missed him. I need I need my oh. content. <laughs> oh man. But that's that's really cool. Uh yeah, 2021's very like unpredictable. You just don't know what's gonna happen. Right. So yeah, I would I would love some more relaxation for sure. Um, hmm. What's one thing about you that surprises people? Um it's maybe it's like my um my the 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 class I'm or is it the class or the course I'm studying um I don't know what you call that like in English but it's uh I think um, degree like the degree yes uh I guess because when I told you uh like a few minutes ago I feel like you were kind of surprised so um so I guess that's something because I feel like most people around me or like from the internet expect me to actually do something more that or something that sounds more creative than what I do so. I guess that's uh, what uh, people are surprised about. And maybe maybe another thing, but that may sound a little stupid, but 
that I'm actually like not English speaking. <laughs> uh, oh because, no, uh, or like a native because uh, uh, I like a native speaker just because um, I don't feel like that. But a lot of people are confused about that, and um, maybe that also because I feel like I kind of had some practice with speaking English through. All these years making well, it's not all these years, but like through the last year making content, and um, maybe that too. But <laughs> I mean, your English is great. So I mean, honestly, you're you're doing great, my friend. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, hmm, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to your younger self, like mm -hmm. just in life in general, as a twenty one year old? As a 21-year-old, um, honestly, be yourself and be, don't try to make people like you and don't, um, I don't know, I feel, I feel like because when I was like a teenager or younger, I really, because like I said, I didn't have a lot of friends and I desperately tried to be someone else just to gain friends and to just maybe, yeah, also social media did made some huge put some huge pressure on me back then and I really like stuff I did back then I can't really understand why I did I mean I know why I did it but I would never do it like I was so obsessed with um making things look different as they are and um looking like people expect expected me to and just all that jazz you know like all that unhealthy social media stuff that happens and Yeah. yeah, um I kind of I kind of did that and in the last few years I kind of learned to be more myself and just to just let go of weird expectations that people around you have and do your thing. Yeah, I guess that is definitely something I would tell myself because I think yeah, the one thing is like definitely I would tell my younger self too, like just be yourself. <laughs> Don't try to be a people pleaser. It does not work. I've learned yeah. to like, you know, be honest and, you know, chill. Cause I, I can be a very extra person. Like in high school, I was very extra. I did the most. I was extremely and I was extremely like, sane. So <laughs> I've learned to, to calm down and realize that, um, I just need to, you know, just tone it down a little bit. Because I was at a 10, I needed to be, like, at a 2. So, mm -hmm. that's mostly I me. I feel like, looking back, it's probably hard to tell that to a teenager and, and stuff. Like, because... Uh, As a teenager, you're just you're think you you think you're doing everything right, <laughs> and yeah. this is like the typical thing that you hear when also parents talk to you or something like that. And uh, now that I'm 21, which is not old or anything, and I'm not like a like a wise person now, but like I definitely see that there was something going wrong <laughs> um, back then. And uh, yeah, I would have loved to help my my 14 year old self, whatever. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Um, so the last question I have, how, how do you define success? Oh, wow. The last question. Um, exciting. I know. Very deep. I am <laughs> success. Well, I would say success is when you're happy with yourself and when you're okay with yourself and you don't feel as if you have to do something that you don't like or you don't feel... You know, if you, I feel like success is when you finished everything that you, okay, that's dumb because you don't always need to need a, need a list of stuff to finish to be successful or, or something. But like when you're at the end of the right. day, when you're, when you just don't have anything left to do and you're just happy and you're just, yeah, um, happy with the simple things and like when you're just happy with the things that they are and not have like any thoughts back in your head that tell you that this and that should be different or something, I guess then you are a very successful person. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. I think the key is definitely just be, if you're happy with yourself, then that's success, to be yes. honest. I would have to say this has been 
the most fun episode I have to say, because just being able to talk with you and like get your thoughts and like pick your brain about everything and the, the save file, YouTube, Twitch, how you're feeling was like 2021 and and everything. It's been like eye opening, and I hope hopefully everyone else feels like this was a very good episode Aww. and they've learned something from this because I definitely learned something from this for sure. I have to say because I'm gonna go out into the world and saying that. I've learned something oh. from Paul Pancake. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so, so much. And thank you so, so much for, for having me. Like, I'm super honored. Um, when I got your DM about that, I was uh, over the moon. So thank you so, so much. And thank you to everyone who's listening. You're welcome. So where can the listeners find you? Uh, well, I like I said, I have a YouTube channel called Paul Pancake. You can just type in Paul Pancake uh, and it should come up um, on YouTube. And I also have a um, Twitch channel where I stream every Tuesday and Saturday um, from now, from next week on because uh, I've been on a break till now. And yeah, it's just twitchtv.com. No, Twitch twitch.tv slash paul pancake yt um because paul pancake was already taken for some reason <laughs> and um mm. yeah, i guess and i also have a twitter account which is also paul pancake yt so that's where you guys can find me i would love to uh, meet some of you new people who are listening right now and um yeah have a fun time cool well Again, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Had so much fun. Hopefully we can do this again more often, you know, talk more without, you know, with a podcast interview, you know, yeah, and everything. Sure. Oh, my God. I would love uh, that. Most definitely. Well, thank you so much. I will hopefully see you soon again. Thank you. Well, that was the entire episode with Paul Pancake. I hope you all enjoyed today's conversation that I had with him because I definitely learned a lot from what he was saying about Sims, YouTube, social media, Harry Potter, how he balances his studies with on top of making content at the same time, which is definitely a lot. And I can definitely apply that to my life where I'm practicing a lot more time management, mental health, self-care and everything and how I can make it better for me. And hopefully you kind of learned a little bit more about him, what he does and how he does things and apply it to your own life too. But if you want to go check out the Harry Potter world that you mentioned, his social media, his YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz, all those links will be down below in the show notes so you can check them out or on my website, springsims.com for the new latest post on there. But make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe, and follow me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And I will hear from y'all next week. Bye.